Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. Uh, hope you guys are doing well and heading into a nice weekend. It's heartening to note that our Friday HIV videos have become like a morning newspaper with coffee. Only boomers will relate to this concept. But if you are one of those people who used to wake up in the morning, look for your newspaper and have a cup of coffee, you understand what I'm talking about. As you know, last week we had two videos. I'm trying to step up the production of HIV videos to uh, two videos per week. And um, doing uh, two videos per week is very difficult because I have so many other videos that I have to make for the genomics uh, group. And um, HIV videos need a lot of study before I can make one. Uh, today I have a video for you that took me extra time to produce because I had not heard of a concept called CERC RNA before. I needed to understand what it is before being able to understand uh, this breakthrough from India. And uh, that's why um, I couldn't bring this to you earlier. But this will be one of the two HIV videos I'll be dropping this week. So in today's video, I'll walk you through the concepts and then uh, talk about the breakthrough finding and speculate on how the new knowledge will translate into therapy and how long that process might take. But before we proceed further, I sincerely request that you support our channel by subscribing if you have not done so already. And if you are already a subscriber, please consider taking the next step and pressing the join button to become a member and to help the channel keep on coming up with HIV videos. So with that said, I think we should get started with our uh, topic for today, CERC RNA and how uh, HIV uses the CERC RNA to propagate itself. Let's get started. <music> Welcome back friends. Well, let us start at the beginning. We have 46 chromosomes organized into 23 pairs with uh, one chromosome in each pair from the mother and the other from the father. The first 22 pairs of chromosomes are known as autosomes and determine individual traits, whereas the 23rd pair of chromosomes determines if the individual is a male or a female depending on whether it's a XY pair for male or XX pair for female. Within these chromosomes are genes. Each gene carries the instruction for making a particular protein or set of proteins. And these proteins are essential for various biological processes in the body. And they are also responsible for individual traits like blood type, hair color, etc. And humans have in excess of 25,000 genes and we are still counting them. And uh, the human DNA is huge. Our uh, latest uh, genomic sequencing machines and uh, software is helping improve this process of identifying uh, more genes and we'll have a final count one day. But right now the count is still on. We have in excess of 25,000 genes. I've already spoken in detail about how genes throw out mRNA, which is basically the recipe for a protein. And the tRNA takes this mRNA, reads it and synthesizes proteins based on the recipe. These proteins have specific functions. Defective genes mean defective mRNA or defective protein rece uh, recipes and therefore faulty protein production resulting into genetic diseases. What I did not know was the existence of something called CERC RNA. It seems that in early 2010, scientists discovered and characterized CERC RNA. I am still in the process of understanding how CERC RNA is formed, so I will bring updates in future about how they are formed and how, it, how the knowledge of that fits into HIV cure. So we'll revisit this entire video with more improved knowledge. Think of this like peeling layers of an onion. Assume that we have left a layer unpeeled, but we'll peel it later on. Based on what I have read so far, it seems that we know little, uh, a little more about uh, CERC RNA in humans, and I'll attempt to explain you whatever little we know. It seems that CERC RNAs can act as sponges for microRNA, small RNA molecules that typically bind to messenger RNAs or mRNAs to regulate gene expression. By sequestering microRNAs, CERC RNAs can indirectly influence the expression of genes targeted by these microRNA and therefore inhibit their functions. Then the question becomes, what the hell is a microRNA and where do they come from? Well, again, I'm trying to understand this process, but at a high level, it seems that something called as pre-microRNA is formed in the nucleus and are transcribed from the DNA. They then undergo some kind of splicing after they are ejected out of the nucleus 
and into the cytoplasm and end up as mature microRNA with a length of uh, approximately around, uh, say, 20 to 25 nucleotides. Uh, one function, uh, it seems, of the microRNA is uh, degradation of the target mRNA, preventing it from being translated into a protein. It's also suspected that yet another function or the second function that we know of uh, could be to block the translation of the target mRNA into a protein, reducing protein production. Uh, and the last known function, suspected function of uh, the microRNA is to repress translation uh, without degrading the mRNA, leading to the reduction, reduced uh, production of uh, the target protein. So we now have news that researchers from Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, uh, that is IISER, which is located in Bhopal, it's part of northern India, have identified a specific circular RNA called CITRAN, uh, which plays a crucial role in the multiplication of AIDS causing HIV-1 virus within the human body. Dr. Ajit Chande, who is one of the lead researcher, said, characterizing circular RNA can be tricky because it usually is less abundant, making it further challenging to detect in native form. It's like trying to follow a complicated recipe. Additionally, when we look at RNAs during infection, there is so much information from the virus that it can make it hard to find the less common ones like circ RNA. So we need to devise different ways to spot these less common RNA molecules to understand their roles. And that's exactly what his team did. They worked on the problem and developed a novel approach that they call CIRC-ER-SEQ or circ er -SEC, to successfully capture circ RNA from T cells infected with HIV-1 virus and identified a specific circ RNA uh, and uh, that particular specific circ RNA is called CITRAN which plays an important role in the multiplication of the HIV virus. As per Dr. Ajit Chande, the HIV-1 virus attacks the host encoded CITRAN in such a way that it can use it to multiply efficiently. This, according to Dr. Ajit, is a new insight into how viruses like HIV-1 overcome transmission barriers. Indeed, the, this knowledge can lead to new approaches to tackle HIV. And wait, there is more. The team was able to develop a small protein molecule that, an, that can inhibit viral transcription wherever HIV induces CITRAN. Let me explain in a different manner with an incremental detail. An HIV protein known as VPR induces the production of something called as CITRAN. Subsequently, CITRAN binds to a specific protein called SRSF1, thereby effectively disrupting SRSF1's ability to inhibit HIV-1 transcription. This interaction aids in the propagation of HIV-1 virus because if SRSF1 was not inhibited by CITRAN, then SRSF1 would have inhibited the HIV-1 transcription. So, that's, that's the new information that we have from this research team. And as I said, there is more good news. The research team was able to create a molecule that could mimic SRSF1 and perform the functions of compromised SRSF1 and inhibit the viral transcription of HIV. This is great news because just imagine in any HIV patient, if uh, CERC RNA is already working, uh, SRSF1 is uh, inhibited, uh, then if we can produce a proxy for SRSF1, which cannot be impacted by the HIV virus, then that proxy for SRSF1 do, will do the job of SRSF1 and inhibit the transcription or, transcription of HIV virus. So though this is good news, I would say hold on to your horses and don't let your imagination run wild because I have to explain to you how things will proceed from now onwards. What is done in vitro is the first step to prove a concept, and that's already been done by this team here. The next step is to devise an experiment with appropriate delivery mechanisms and methodology to reproduce the effect in animal subjects, and after that, a refined and successful experiment can be replicated in humans in phase one clinical trial with a focus on safety and you know the rest, because we have been through the entire FDA approval cycle. This does take time to conceptualize an approach to promote the science into a deployable technology. This means that HIV cure is not coming tomorrow, but we still have 2027 target date for AGT-103-T in my opinion, 
and I think that because of the fast track designation EBT 101 is also likely to come up in that ballpark for approval and we now have an additional promising line of inquiry that can potentially lead to a cure. And friends, one of the things I would like you to imagine from things we already know, of course, I'm not a scientist, I don't claim to um, say that what I am saying right now is the gospel truth and that's how it will happen. But we know that HIV virus is in CD40 cells, it's in the dendritic cells, it's in the macrophages, which means that if we devise uh, a molecule uh, that can interrupt uh, HIV transcription, then we want the molecule to reach all these target cells and uh, we want it to have the penetration so that there is no dormant HIV left. So all those challenges need a suitable delivery vehicle and then we it has to be done in animal model and then it has to be done in human model in, uh, to determine the safety in uh, first uh, phase and then efficacy by dose manipulation in second phase and then potentially approval. So uh, this has a lot of hope. I don't want to pour cold water on your thoughts, but I want us to be realistic. You know, I want everyone to be realistic because uh, HIV is a mind game also as much as it's a physical game. Well, friends, I, I would like to just uh, give you the concept. Think of the uh, HIV virus as a devious villain and uh, think of uh, any therapy as a hero. So typically in the movies, you find that the villain has got all the cards and he's playing everything and you feel that the hero is vulnerable and the hero has an uphill task and he keeps on discovering different weapons that the villain has got and then starts neutralizing each one of them one by one. And it takes the entire movie for the hero to prevail in the end. Something similar to that is happening in HIV research and scientists are increasingly understanding all the facets of uh, HIV and they are starting to plug each one of them and that's how we have antiretroviral therapy. And now with this incremental knowledge and the ability of us to sequence genomes and uh, software and uh, AI capability to uh, study and be predictive about the property of various uh, combinations, I think we are at a very uh, important stage in the fight against HIV and a successful cure is very imminent. And this discovery by the team in India, by Dr. Ajit Chande, is uh, one more very, very strong step towards that end. And I think um, a cure is uh, very much in the horizon somewhere in the 2027 time frame. Well, friends, we haven't had a live stream for a long time for the English audience. Uh, so I'm thinking that um, this Saturday in Toronto at around 10.30 uh, uh, p.m., uh, I would like to do a live stream. I've picked up 10.30 p.m. because by that time, most of you would be free uh, from doing all the work that you do and you're on your own and you'll have time to participate and uh, interact. And also, uh, at that time, it'll be morning in India. So uh, overall, I think uh, everyone should be able to see this. It'll be a bilingual uh, live stream. Uh, I'll be uh, talking in English and wherever I have questions in Hindi, uh, I'm going to translate the question as well as the answer uh, in English and vice versa. So be prepared for a bilingual uh, session. So with that said, uh, my friends, I would like to end this video here. And I hope you have a great weekend. And until the live stream, bye for now.